Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name's Bruce, and if you've been here before, you probably already knew that. Today, I'm gonna show you how I made this modern walnut table with steel legs. This table's journey started out at a place near me called Hartwood. They are where I got the lumber for this, and they happen to have a bunch of industrial machines that were really cool to see processing this lumber. They've got a planer that does both sides at once and then a straight line rip machine that just gets a straight edge on everything. Once I got everything back in my shop, I just arranged everything in what looked the best to me and then I marked out the ultimate size that I needed. For this table, we were doing a length of 72 inches. So I just used a piece of chalk because it shows up better on the walnut and marked out the 72 inches that I needed. Then I took the pieces to the miter saw to cut them to length. There was still a little bit of milling that needed to be done, so I started at my joiner, joining the face and one edge, then cleaned up the other sides to make them parallel at the planer as well as the table saw. I laid everything out and marked some lines across all of the boards. Then I numbered the boards that touched each other the same so that I could put them back in the same order. Then I used my domino to cut mortises in all of the boards. I'm using this for joinery. Next, it was time to glue everything together. For this, I'm using Tight Bond 3, and it really helps to do as much prep work for your glue up as you can. It will keep your stress way down and just make everything go smoother. So I had everything within arm's reach. I would just put on some glue, smooth it out with an, a spatula that I like to use. I would put in all the dominoes and add a little bit more glue and then stack up the board and hammer it home. Then I would just keep doing this until I worked my way all the way up. When you start to put it in clamps, don't forget you want good pressure on it, but you don't want to clamp it so hard that you squeeze all of the glue out of the joints. Just give it nice pressure to where all of the joints close up and it should be fine. I had two boards toward the end that were not meeting up just perfectly, so I grabbed another clamp and clamped it vertically so that it would draw those up together. Then, this time, I actually used a wet rag to just remove some of the glue while it was still kind of damp. I'm going to be using epoxy resin for the void filling on the top. So after the glue was dry, I flipped it up to access the bottom so that I could put sheathing tape everywhere that there was a crack or a hole. That way, when I flipped it back down and poured the epoxy on the top, it wouldn't leak through. Moving this tabletop was a bit of a chore because I had probably about a hundred pounds worth of clamps on them. I called my wife out and she helped me wrestle the thing up onto the workbench. Now it was time to fill those voids with some epoxy resin. I got all of my materials ready and if you're not even using little kid cups, are you even doing it right? I'm not sure. So I use these dental syringes to really get in the cracks of everything. They work great and they're inexpensive. I've got links to them below as well as everything I used in this project. So if you want to check those out, definitely click on those links. And this is what you want to see. You want to fill those voids until they're actually a little bit overflowed so that by the time it settles, it's still above your table surface. I used a hand plane and a card scraper to knock down the high areas of the epoxy resin after it had dried. And I actually ended up doing quite a few pours of this because you end up discovering other voids that you didn't see before. Big shout out to my friend Chris from Cowdog Craftworks. He sent me a magnet to put on the back of my card scraper and it really saved my thumbs. So I'll link below to his channel. I just sanded the rest of it down with an Orville sander. To establish a straight edge, I grabbed my track saw and cut all the way across one long side. Then I could use that side as a reference to bring the rest of it square and in line with itself. Something I've started doing and I learned from my friend Nick is when you're making a through cut with a track saw, especially in some thick hardwood like this, leave enough room that you can bump your track over just a little bit and make a cleanup pass. It removes all of the burning and looks really good.
My customer wanted a really clean chamfer on the underside of this table. It was going to give it a really modern feel. So to achieve this, what I did was set my track off the edge of my table just a little bit. I actually used a combination square to make sure I could get it the same on both sides. Then I tilted the blade on my track saw to 45 degrees and did some test cuts to make sure I was cutting basically two thirds of the thickness off. What that resulted in is a really clean looking large chamfer that gives the edge of this table a really light feel. Then to keep those crisp edges, I just used a 1 8 inch roundover bit in my trim router to just break the sharp edge on the top. I'm getting all my templates attached here and it's going pretty good. I've done some test cuts setting up with a new acrylic template on my router. Um, using the guide bushings like you've seen uh, probably some other people do, but I'm ready now to finally make the real cuts. Uh, to space the little templates that I'm using, I just used a 1 8 inch drill bit and uh, gave it a little extra room. I don't want this table shrinking and going against the steel and cracking somehow because that steel's not going to give. Uh, if you want to see a bunch of this behind the scenes type stuff like this, uh, follow me over on Instagram. It's at BrewDaddy and I'm usually telling about the projects as I'm doing them and love to have you join me over there. Let's get back to the project. I made sure the legs were in the right spot on each side. Then I laid down some painter's tape and glued my template to it. I'm going to be using some guide bushings in my router and I didn't go into great detail with it here. If you'd like to see more about this process and how it works, leave me a comment below and I might do a full video just on that. The basic premise is there's an offset between the guide bushing and the bit that I'm using. So I just use the guide bushing with all of that calculated to bump up against these templates that I set out to get a perfectly cut mortise for my leg to slip into. One quick note about these legs, I did not make them. They were actually purchased by the customer from someone else who fabricated them. I made the mortise slightly larger than the steel so that as the table shrinks and expands over the seasons, it won't bump the steel and actually split the table apart. I know that sounds really dramatic and it wouldn't be like it exploded overnight, but it could have some serious effects if that table that moves goes against the steel that doesn't move. I put a stop collar on a drill bit and drilled out for the threaded inserts that I'm using. Then I used a countersink bit to just round off a little bit of the top before securing the threaded inserts down inside the holes. I used a little bit of CA glue to put those in and I'm using Starbond. I'm actually an affiliate of Starbond, so if you want to pick up some of this really good CA glue, click the link in the description and you can get a discount by using my code. I finished off the bottom with some hand sanding and then finished the whole bottom letting it cure. Once I flipped it over, I started working on the top, bringing it up through all of the grits and then working on the finishing process for that. I'm about to mix up some finish and finish the tabletop. I've already done the underside and it looked fantastic. So I'm really excited to get some finish on this. I'm using Rubio Monocoat and it's a two part mixture. So I'm gonna go mix that up real quick and then spread it on. The Rubio Monocoat Pure that I'm using is a three to one mixture of the oil to the hardener. So I actually use some more of those dental syringes to get the proper amount into the cup that I needed. I ended up using about half of this can for the bottom and the top, so it wasn't too bad. The way you use this finish is to mix it really well, pour it on your surface and spread it around with some kind of scraper or maybe even an old credit card. Then you take a white Scotch-Brite pad and you actually scrub and kind of buff it into the wood surface. This really works it into the wood fibers and gives it a significantly smoother finish than if you don't do this step. Then let it sit for 10 minutes and after that come back with a clean cotton cloth and just buff off all of the excess. 
The way it worked well for me was to just remove the bulk of it with one towel and then I came back with another clean towel and buffed it until it was totally dry to the touch. And with that, the tabletop was done. Since I used threaded inserts and connector bolts, this was knockdown furniture at this point. So I was able to deliver the piece to the customer, reattach the legs and get it set up in their dining room. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below. I'll see you on the next video.